kitchens across the country that Edison's division of genius seems to have the strongest case. You know it being 1% inspiration, 99% perspiration. And still we would have to argue that Indian accent chef Manish Mehrotra brings just a little more than that to his table. Its focus on modern Indian food has garnered it a place on practically every fine dining list, including a place in Glam Media's Best 100 across the world. That the accolades and awards have come thick and fast is a surprise to no one who has eaten here. Riffs like blue cheese stuffed baby naans, galotti kebabs enhanced with foie gras, and desserts that look to Doda Barfi as their base have served it well. But perhaps the most important aspect is that these clever combinations, the smart little spins, find their inspiration in unexpected places. And so today Manish is taking us to those that he enjoys, but more to the ones that have triggered his wildest flights of fancy. Which is probably why I shouldn't have been surprised that this is where we started, at his local fruit wala. Chef. What are we shopping for? This is near my house yeah. in Delhi and this is where I do all my food shoppings yeah. and everything. Yeah. So and a lot of ideas, inspirations, yeah. like to make a sorbet with this yeah. or make a sorbet with that. Yeah. So, that, that yeah. 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 so guys, Chef is being kind enough to let us in on how in a sense something as basic as this gets to transform into well this. Sorbets are now somewhat standard. What makes this stand out is he doesn't stop there. He remembers and adds the masala it used to be served with. Because nostalgia, the old tastes of childhood are precisely what he trades in. We were kids, we used to have a lot of uh, guava tree all around. Yeah. And again, not just guava, but you did guava with... Uh, uh, black rock, sorry. Yeah. Because that is what it's supposed to be eaten if you're eating it raw. Yeah. Either with a salt or a black salt or a yeah. chili salt. Um, which goes very well with the palate cleanser of a sorbet concept yeah. like a kala khatta yeah. something but you can get ideas from anywhere maybe this maybe the dhaba where the fulka guy is yeah. making fulkas or or a panwala yeah. so these are the things which i incorporate in my food yes in his neighborhood basic food from a basic stand a spitting flame a hot tandoor are all fodder for the fine dining that will follow but more, these also remain the places he shops at, the places he eats at. Like this, need a quick snack on the trot, hot chips will have it for you. Just look at the range on offer. There are banana chips, green banana chips, potato chips, adrak potato chips, chili potato chips. Outside the Karela ones are getting the old slice and dice, but inside there's clearly more than enough to make up for it. These things can be used somewhere here and there as for the texture, yeah. as a texture. Then I buy idli podi from here. Oh yeah? Yeah, idli podi, we use it with the soft shell crabs. Ah. So, so idli podi is gunpowder? Gunpowder, it's gunpowder. And you can mix one of these things together. Yeah. It can be a wonderful soft idli, spicy masala and crunchy. These things can be a wonderful snack. So speaking of pori or good old fashioned gunpowder, Speaking of crisp, deep-fried goodness, those snacky, greasy chatpata tastes that we all love, here they have been souped up. You can see it most vividly in his soft-shell crab, also in his particularly pungent baby idlis. And while both are true to the South Indian spice they employ, they've also made sure their gunpowder came with a little extra kick. We make our own pori. Yeah. Because usually the market pori is very, very spicy. Our puri has got a different recipe where we use a lot of uh, few things which are not traditionally used in puri masala. Okay. So we use that like we use some nut powder also. Uh -huh. A little bit of flaxseed, yeah. a little bit of uh, rice, uh, crushed oh. rice. So it gives a nice... Uh, <laughs> Unbelievable how good it is. And for the final touch, it's topped off with flame roasted coconut flakes and a tomato pickle based dipping sauce. So yes, while there is wit in the interpretation, it feels like there's warmth too. Back on the walk, Manish insists, and who can blame him that none would be complete without some chaat, or most specifically, aloo tikkis, hot, gleaming, sizzling in oil and fat. 
looking like a chart. Yes. And 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 uh, if you see the real meaning of chart is to lick. Ha. And why lick? It should be so delicious that yeah. you have to lick the yeah. lick your fingers or yes. lick your platter or anything. So that is why it's chart because it's really chart is one of the most delicious things. It, and, and it wasn't even chart that inspired you much so much as a sear, right? In this case. Yes. <laughs> the tikki karari karna. So ha. that is why the idea of a potato spear chart. Yeah. Where the, we have made the entire tikki as a karara. So yeah. a lot of texture. Lot of yeah. texture. And so when it came time to up the karari quotient, he found himself a secret weapon, a tea strainer. Yes, apparently a tea strainer is the powerful tool that allowed him to both maintain shape and keep the crunchiness going. A uh, tea strainer. Huh. It's suddenly you can do something with this. You can do something with this. Something like that. So, okay, fill it with this, fill it with that, and fill it with potato shreds and all. Yeah. 